Welcome everyone. Last time on my channel, I created a little winter deer girl. Today, I wanted to give her a friend. I have loved foxes ever since I was a little kid, so I was really excited to create a cute were fox character. Just like last time, I will be using a cave club doll. To prep the doll, I remove her hair off camera and start to take off her factory makeup with some 100% pure acetone. With the original paint gone, I paint her scalp orange in preparation for her hair. I also remove her ears, which is actually a bit of a shame because I think that they're just so adorable, but it's necessary so she can get some cute new fox ears. To begin her face up, I start with my usual steps of sketching out her upper lash line and lower waterline. For this face, I use mostly Caran d'Ache branded watercolour pencils, as well as my white and black Derwent Inktense pencils. When I was choosing the colour palette for this character, I was super inspired by Meb from the film Wolfwalkers. Wolfwalkers is a really beautiful animated movie about werewolves, and even though they're not the exact same creature, I thought her red hair and green eyes were such a perfect combination to use on my doll. The character in the movie is really mischievous and exciting, which I wanted to capture in my own creation. I really loved this movie and would really recommend checking it out if you haven't already. I fill in the whites of her eyes and then use a brown pencil to start shading in her lower lash line and the crease of her eye socket. I then blend those lines out a bit with my chalk pastels and continue using them around her face to add more details and contours. I also start adding some red blushing. I used many cool shades of pink on my dear girl so I thought using more warm shades of red and orange would make for a very cute contrast. I also add red to her lips. To help enhance the gradient of her eyes, I go in with some chalk pastels in green and yellow and blend them together. With a black pencil, I start sketching in her eyelashes. I normally do my first sketch quite lightly and use many layers between coats of Mr. Super Clear to help build up the opacity of the black. Onto one of my favourite steps in the face up, I add dark and light grey shadows to the top half of her eye. This gives the eye more dimension and really helps to stop the eyes from looking too stark. 
For me, it's the time when the face-up really starts coming together. Using a creamy coloured pencil, I draw a highlighted crease in her eyelid. Depending on the doll design, I will either do this shape in a darker shadow colour or a lighter highlight colour. For this doll, I wanted to keep her looking younger and more fresh faced, so I went with the cream. I continue to add highlight points to the rest of her face, including the edge of her inner corner, the tip and bridge of her nose, and on her lips. To help create the shape of her eyebrow, I first go in with some ginger coloured chalk pastel dust and a tiny brush. I use my kneaded eraser to help shape it into the expression I'm after, and once I'm happy with that, I'll seal it in with a layer of MSC before going in with my pencils. I sketch in the individual hairs of her eyebrows but I will do most of the details later on with paint, so this layer doesn't have to be too perfect. I use white acrylic to help add vibrancy to the highlights of her face. I love adding the white eye shines, I think it really brings her to life. Another favourite moment of mine is adding a few sparkles to her lower waterline. It's a stylistic thing I picked up from some digital illustrators I've seen on Instagram and Pinterest. If you're interested in expanding your art style, I would really suggest exploring other mediums. I personally have found so much inspiration for face-ups from digital illustrations. So that she will match my dear girl, I also add some white highlights to her eyelashes. This is the only highlight I don't pre-sketch with my pencils, just because they have to be so skinny and precise, and I can use the black lashes as a guide anyway. I mix some very light olive green paint to add some sparkles and details to her iris. Working on an eye shape this big, compared to a Monster High doll, I wanted to keep enough detail to make it interesting, but not so much that it left my kind of stylized, illustrative aesthetic, which I love so much. Of course this girl gets freckles. I mix up some watercolour paint in an orangey-brown colour, and dot some little frecks around her face. I use the corner of a paper towel to dab away the excess paint. And that's the last step of her face up. I've recently been waiting until after I take my doll photos to gloss their eyes, just so there won't be reflections in the final images. Let me know if that's something you like, or I can go back to glossing them at this point. Moving on from her face, the next thing I start to create is her tail. I trace four long oval pieces on some felt and cut them out. I sew along each edge, good sides together, and then flip it right way around. I use some yarn fluff I had lying around from making hair for another project to stuff the felt tail and sew a ladder stitch along the remaining raw edges to finish. I also add a magnet into the base of the tail so that it can be attached to her body later on. I decide to needle felt the outside of her tail. I do this so that it looks extra cute and fluffy so that it can match the colour of her legs perfectly, and to let me add the iconic white tip to the end of the foxtail. I use a special felting needle and some finger protectors to stay safe, and start the process.
With the tail all complete, it's time to start modifying her body. The first thing I do is drill into her lower back with my Dremel tool, and then use super glue to attach a magnet. I definitely could have attached the tail directly to her body, but I thought it would make posing it easier, without the worry of it ever breaking off permanently. Then I move on to her feet. I wanted to give her realistic fox feet with adorable little bean toes. So I have to use my Dremel again to remove her human toes and the back of her heel. I mix up some two-part clay off camera and then start building up her new feet. This clay cures slowly over a few hours, so I like to move gradually and allow each stage of the sculpt to cure slightly before building up any more detail. I use a damp finger to smooth out areas and a few different silicone tools to help add smaller details. Once the clay has been left to cure, I add a coat of paint to her legs. I start with a dark warmish grey colour on her feet and then blend it up to a gingery orange on the rest of her legs. For her dark little feet, I wanted them to be furry, but not with the same length as her legs, so I decide to flock them. I take a mixture of black, grey and brown acrylic yarn and start cutting it up into the smallest pieces I can. Once I have a good amount, I give each foot a coat of tacky craft glue and then press on a generous amount of the flocking. I then wait about 40 minutes for the glue to dry completely before brushing off the excess. Then I'm left with some cute little fuzzy feet. For her legs, I use my favourite fabric glue and some acrylic yarn to create her fur. I find for legs specifically, it's easier to get a nice result gluing the brushed out yarn straight to the doll, rather than creating wefts first. It's a bit more challenging as far as keeping all the yarn clean and together and looking neat and in the right direction but it's definitely worth it for a final product that looks much more natural. To create a nice transition from her feet, I first start with a brown yarn, and then a ginger yarn further up the leg. To transition the two colours, I have a section of the leg where I alternate each colour as I glue it to her leg. To apply each section of fur, I lay down some glue and smooth it out with a silicon brush and then carefully place a bunch of yarn hair down onto it. Then using the silicone tool and my finger, I press the yarn into the glue until it's all covered and laying flush with the leg. I use a combination of scissors and an eyebrow razor to give her legs a haircut. I go in with the scissors first to get the general shape of the fur, but I go over every section with the eyebrow razor to make sure it all looks organic and that there are no blunt edges. While I was needle felting her tail, I also made her a pair of ears. I make a pair very similar to these for my dear girl, so if you're interested in that process make sure you check that video out. I'll attach these to her head while I'm doing her hair, 
to try and blend the two together as much as I can. For her hair, I use the same orange yarn as her legs, but this time I do turn them into glue wefts first, just to keep the process neat and as easy as possible. I start by gluing hair all around the perimeter of her hairline and down the middle of her head to give her a center part. As I start gluing in the rest of the hair, I also glue on her felted ears, making sure to add enough hair around them to disguise where they're attached to her head. I love how wild her hair looks out, but I decide to give her some sweet little braids to contain some of the volume and to create a balanced silhouette for the finished doll. I use a green embroidery thread to tie off the braids. I love how it brings out the green in her eyes. To keep her warm, I crocheted her a little scarf. So that it would match my other dear doll, I used some alcohol inks to add different shades of green, yellow and grey. To blend the colours together, I also drop in some isopropyl alcohol, which acts as a medium to mix them together. And with that, she's all done. Please don't forget to like and share this video. It really helps me to grow this channel and share my art with you all. Let me know what you think of her in the comments. I love hearing all your feedback. Also, make sure to find me on Instagram, where you can adopt one of my dolls or commission me to create a one-of-a-kind creation just for you. Thanks so much for watching, your support means so much to me. I'll see you in the next video. Have an awesome day.